Lazenby, and you're listening to the Life in Quebec show. This is Andrew Greenfield for the Life in Quebec show, and I'm at Chateau Laurier in Quebec City. The Festival de Cinema de la Ville de Quebec is on right now in Quebec City, and I'm joined by George Lazenby. George uh, famously played James Bond in the 1969 movie On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, George, thanks for talking to Life in Quebec. My pleasure. So, I'm realising a boyhood dream here, and I'm, you know, I'm meeting James Bond. I'm sorry, it doesn't happen every day. I'm a little bit starstruck. So to excuse me, you're English. <laughs> I am, I am, but you know, blame my mum and dad for that, I guess. Um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service is today acknowledged by many as one of the best film, best Bond films ever made. Well, some people have got good taste. Now, what did you enjoy most about making the film? Uh, getting in the helicopter at night and taking off to Geneva with one of the girls and having fun. Now, we know that the suit fitted, but how did you feel about stepping into Sean Connery's suit, uh, shoes in terms of the role? Yeah, you know, put it this way. If you're a guy who likes doing what Sean Connery does, who gets the woman, wins at gambling, shoots people and gets in his way, Anybody who doesn't want that part isn't a man. So I, uh, I took it gratefully, even though there were 3,000 other guys up for it. <laughs> yeah, but they picked you. They picked you, didn't well, they? Well, come on, can't you see? <laughs> even today, no. <laughs> Which leads me on to the next question, actually. So already a rugged-looking male model at the time, did you have to work out physically for the role at all? Like, you know, like Daniel Craig did later on, you know, when he was appointed James Bond, and then when he actually, when the movie came out, the guy's been on the weights, clearly, you know. Did, yeah. uh, I've never been on weights. No. I never worked out. My body was just from living life. Okay. And I did. How many times can you do it tonight, George? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did you get to keep anything from the film set? Everything was stolen. Everything. By you? Are no. You? no. <laughs> I, I had skis which specially made for George Lazenby. I had... All my clothes, especially made for George Lazenby, written inside for Honor Majesty. Uh, well, some of them were given them to the Salvation Army. Yeah. My ex-wife, my ex-wife uh, said, "You don't use this stuff anymore." No, and she took it all down to the Salvation Army. So, so you don't have you don't have anything from nothing. the film. Nothing. Uh, wow. Um, do you do you regret only making the one Bond movie and not going on to to to, to make more after that? Only once, I can remember I was with my mother and I had two kids and no money. Okay. And I was saying, damn, I should have done another one. And then uh, I ran into a guy that I had done business with in Belgium, building health studios yeah. before Bond. And he ran off with my money. And I saw him in a bar. And I went in to say, hey, Pete, how are you? And he said, oh my God, uh, George, uh, I'll be right back. And he's with a girl. He went out the men's room, and he was there longer than I thought, and I went in and he pulled the Cooper Loomers out of the window, no. disappeared. But then I asked the girl, what are you doing here? And said, we're building health studios in Canberra. And I said, where are you getting the money? Oh, mercantile credits. So I went over to mercantile credits the next day. And I'm living with my mother, so I got no yeah. money. And I said, do you know that guy, Peter Myers, you got there? He's a crook. And I told him my story. And they said, George, thank God, we're just about to give him $2 million. What can we do for you? I said, give me a house. <laughs> and did they? No. They gave me a deposit <laughs> on the house. And they gave me a low payment yeah. so I could get by. And then uh, next thing, a guy comes to my door who said he used to work with me. I couldn't remember. Let's go skiing. And so I looked at my wife. She's pregnant with one kid and said, you can go. I can't. I went skiing, and the first run down the hill, I knocked over this girl, who I thought was a little girl, but it was uh, the wife of a guy that I did the big fry ads for in England. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ian's down in the bar. He'd love to see you, George. Come on down. So I went down there, and he gives me a thousand dollars. Wow. Not to do a cigarette ad until he can see the people and blah blah blah. Yeah. Next week, another thousand. Next week, another thousand. And this one for about six weeks. Yeah. And so I'm back in the money, I've got a house. Yeah. And then uh, he says, come on down to Sydney. Uh, they want to talk to you. 
And I went to this board meeting and they said, George, is this for Australia? It's only a small uh, amount of people, even though it's a big country, but it's just for Australia. Uh -huh. Please don't say no. Think about it first. And we're going to tell you uh, what it is. And then don't say yes or no. Have lunch with us and then say yes or no. Okay. I said, okay. And I'm willing to take five grand, right? Yeah. He said, 75,000. Suppose we can afford it. And um, what year was this? This was... Oh, 76. So that's serious cash, isn't it? Yeah. Serious. Uh, uh, it was a dollar fifteen, a dollar fifty uh, US for one Australian dollar. Yeah, that's. I mean, even today, that's. I mean, that's good. Yeah. That's good money, but uh, you know, then that's huge, isn't it? That's huge. Yeah. So I get that. Yeah, so I almost blew it. I got so drunk during that lunch, and I wasn't a drinker. Right. I was just celebrating having a. What do you mean you're, you're Australian? What do you mean you're, you're not yeah. a drinker? What's well, going I'm on? I'm a big drinker <laughs> at that time at lunch. And so the, the guy says to me, Whispers, George, you'll blow it. Calm down. And so I did. Next thing I knew, uh, I, it went on for years. It went on for years, six years. And they'd pay me 10% extra each year. And when anywhere in the world, they'd have to bring wherever I was working. Oh, it's nice work if you can get it. I it, mean, that's my luck. And I uh, went back, and the funny part was, when they paid me, they paid me in cash in the restaurant. Yeah. And in the restaurant, Sean Conrad. So I go over, and I've got an article in my pocket that my bond's better than his. Right. <laughs> so I took it over and put it in front of him. He didn't look at me. He just looked at the article. And then I went back and sat down, and then he came by my table, knowing that it was me then. Yeah. It says, good on you, Trubert. He's looked in the basket that's full of cash, and he's oh. going, you're doing all right, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Now, um, it was like that. Other than you, who, who's your favorite James Bond, and why? Sean. Sure. Yeah, because? He created it. Yeah. I can remember uh, seeing Dr. No, and I took the girl there, it was about 1962 or something like that, uh, in Canberra, took it to the movies, and going in, I'd say uh, 70, 80 percent chance. Yeah. Coming out, I had 10. She wanted that guy in there. <laughs> so, no, fair enough. It was, uh, yeah, well, that's, and that made me say, Jesus, if ever I got the chance of that, I'll yeah. go for it. No, fair enough. But I never thought about acting. Right. Never thought about it. Could I have an Australian accent? I used to walk like this. Yeah. You know, nobody wanted me for an actor. Now, uh, becoming Bond is your life story, and uh, um, from a from a young age to pretty much the present day. In your early years, after not enjoying school so much, you became a car salesman, both in Australia and then in the UK. Are you a better actor or a better car salesman? Right now, I'd be a better actor, okay. simply because I had twenty years in a class. Yeah. But back then, I was such a bad salesman. I was a motor mechanic. Yeah. And I knew everything that was wrong with the used car when I drove it, and that would show up on my guilty face. <laughs> and so they sent me away to, uh, to Melbourne to How to Win Friends and Influence People, yeah. this course. Yeah. And the thing is, shut up and listen and nod. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's basically what I learned. And before I'd go out and try and tell the car, I'd say, you know, it's got a gearbox, it's a little shaky, but this is me on here. And I would listen, nod my head, and the guy would say, yeah, I'll take that. And then my sales went through the roof. And then yeah. I was used car salesman, which is the best job in any business. Because you can lend cars to your friends. Yeah. You trade them in, like I would. I was in Canberra trading the embassy cars in. Yeah. Because they get two years stints, and they have to get rid of their car. So then I'd get invited to their parties. And that's how I met Belinda. Yeah. At the fancy parties. And meanwhile, uh, I was an uneducated guy from Queensland who uh, didn't even know where, if you asked me where Vietnam was, I wouldn't have a clue. You know I mean? Now, uh, becoming Bond, the project, what, what made you do it? What, why did you think, yeah, I, I need to do this? Or no, it gonna... wasn't my idea. There's a friend of mine, David Rothschild, he stayed with me for a while and he got to know me. And uh, it's funny how we met David and I. It's interesting because I met him at his dad's place having dinner because I was famous. Mm -hmm. He didn't want anything to do with me. 
He was very young, he was like 20 at the time, and I was like 50. Yeah. And then I met uh, him again at a party in Barbados. And he walked right by me going with a double tape. Who was that guy? And, uh, and then I met him in a, about two weeks later in a bar in Australia. Mm -hmm. He was on the other side of the bar. And this is all in a month. Yeah. And he comes around and he said, I guess we're meant to know each other. <laughs> and so, oh, that's right, I was staying at his place. Right. And he wasn't there in London because he's uh, my, one of my best friend's daughters married to him. Yeah. I know his girlfriend. So he come, he's away and he comes in the kitchen one morning, I'm drinking beer, and he says, who are you? I said, who are you? And he said, I own the place. <laughs> so that's how we met. So he just went off somewhere and didn't take any notice of me from there on. And then in the bar, he said, oh, I guess we're meant to meet each other. And we became friends for life. I made him George, my eldest son's best man. Yes. Well, David, um, he put up the idea. David had heard a lot of my stories. Yeah. And he says, you've got to make something. And I said, I'll find it. I'm going to make something. And he said, and so he put it together. Now, now, just to finish off, uh, I've got a couple of quick questions at the end. Um, is this your first visit to Quebec? Yes. If you could describe Quebec in four words, only four, what would those four words be? They speak French. That so, seems like an exciting place. So, French, exciting. Yeah, it looks yeah. exciting because it's different. People yeah. are open. And so, I believe the food's good. So, French, right. exciting, open, food. Food and golf. And golf. George, thanks for talking to Life in Quebec and all the best for becoming Bond in the future. Cheers, man.